So good to see you. Hmm. Well, you might take your time to go to the other pages. Yay. Ah. Mm, so let your attention um, maybe uh, just settle within your body or the space around your body. And noticing that hearing is happening. Whether we're asleep or awake, hearing is happening. And then noticing like last week, if you were here, that sense of um, noticing if the attention can be even slightly relaxed enough to receive a sound directly, not through the thought process. And this includes any textures of silence and it, it's always that reminder that of course thoughts about our experience will come and go just like sound. And as we try to make space for more of the non-conceptual awareness during the sit, there is that gentle returning. It's just returning to see. You check to see if the attention can receive sound just as it's happening. And this is uh, such a great place of learning that we can connect the attention connects and notice if we can be with any flow of pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral feeling, tone. So we're connecting but not manipulating. letting however sounds are happening be just as they are 
because they are appearing and disappearing just as they are. This is this practice of connecting and being with things just as they are. It's Vipassana. We can notice then shifting to body sensations in your hands. If again, there can be that soft readiness of the attention ready for whatever appears. Hopefully without an idea of how it will be or should be or was. So we're relating to the body sensations just as we would with the sound. The word hands or thumb, palm. is very different than warm, cool. Vibration, heaviness. smooth, rough. But you start noticing how the attention can relax, receive, allow, open up and allow. Wordless emergence. of things as they are. And acceptance. So when the attention notices the movement of the breath in the abdomen, belly. Sometimes there's a way in which a tightening of the attention can happen as the movement is so light. Soften a waiting to see when we can catch the wave. And if there's a controlling or tightening, it's fine. You, that's what's predominant. You just Allow, allow that, maybe open up the attention even to a distant sound. It 
So you just let it be just as it is. We can put words long or short, vague or clear, deep or shallow, disappearing quickly or slowly. You notice when the attention slips off, you just go back to wherever it is as it's moving, no problem. with body sensations that call our attention. It's like the attention will get naturally drawn. Again, there's that receptive way in which the words hip or knee, head, may become foreground for dominant. That's fine. Or the story or judgments, memories, anticipation. It's all fine, you just notice it. And without yanking, if you can, gently drop into the flow of moment to moment, changing sensations. Pleasant, unpleasant, or neutral. And if we can, with emotions, thoughts, there can be the appearance of sadness or joy, aversion, shame. Compassion, planning, remembering. Liking, disliking. Connecting, connecting without trying to fix, manipulate. Letting things be just as they are. But with that delicate, exquisite as possible. Letting the fear be just as it is, or the happiness, care or tenderness, just letting it be just as it is, without having to do anything with it. Not mine, not me, not I.
just formations coming and going by themselves. Life revealing itself moment by moment.
so I um, wanted to make sure I thank Kay today for hosting us. Thank you, Kay. Thank you. And um, just to let you know that uh, Jesse headed out today for Ecuador and Bolivia on his uh, sabbatical, and he'll be here with us next Sunday. He'll be in Quito, Ecuador. So um, that's my exciting news on that level. So he wanted to let you know where he is so that you don't worry he's not coming back. So he'll be here next Sunday. Mm. Yeah, and then if you have any questions about your practice today, it'd be great. Samantha, hello. Hi. Thank you for your guidance. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yeah. I had a question about, um, I guess, the seven factors, um, the difference between tranquility and equanimity has shifted for me a little bit lately. Um, and that's connected with a term that you use often, Michelle, suspension of disbelief um, it's really helped me to repeat that during my sitting somehow it just lifts a lot of self-judgment that I was struggling with and I can drop into you know being with experience a little faster um, and so as I do that then my understanding what I thought concentration was, you know, when concentration arises, of course, is marvelous, but tranquility and equanimity has shifted for me. And I'm just trying to understand their difference and trying to be more receptive to what it means right now. What was um, the last sentence you just said? Your trying last to under understand. understand the difference between tranquility and equanimity okay. Okay. as it shifted, because it has shifted for me. Or anything you think I need to hear. <laughs> so in terms of suspension of disbelief, It almost sounds like it's a suspension of belief in certain thoughts. Is that right? right? Yeah. So is that, so, that's, yeah, that's yes. very, yeah. So Can I don't say, know if I'm misunderstanding it. Uh, no, but well, I, no, no, but it's, it's. Um, the way you said it uh -huh. really allowed me to suspend a judgment belief system and be more in touch with textures, feelings, sensations, and more open, accepting, welcoming, and a lot, way less fear. Yeah. Like, what is he? That's great, because the, cause the, the, um, the phrase um, often is related to doubt. Mm -hmm. And so what I like about it is that you're using that in whatever way you know, you can use it as a suspension of disbelief or a suspension of belief, because actually they can mean, in, in many ways, they can mean the same thing, right? That that you're <laughs> suspending, in the terms of doubt, it would be suspending um, one's former ideas about reality and just letting letting the experience of the practice do itself so that one can see it the ideas that you're going from um, non-experiential understanding to ex ex like to, through the direct experience of being with things as they are, that the experiential belief system arises. Do you see what I mean? So that like, but that that can include <laughs> what's so fun is that that it can include the suspension of believing also our ideas about reality right mm -hmm. it's it's either way either way you phrase it it's it's i think it's a beautiful um 
phrase because it's not a command or a demand. It's a suggestion of how we can do that in time in a way that doesn't, that isn't permanent. So there's more, there's more, um, it's, it's more like an invitation to try the, the experiential reality rather than believe in something. It's the whole basis of what, when the Buddha said, you know, see for yourself, like come and see for yourself versus believe what I say. Yeah. So, so yep. like, and then how that's affecting your whole practice is really, um, again, exciting and wonderful because the seven factors are ripening and coming in and out of balance and certain factors are, are like become predominant or one and that they're like, a, they're like a, it's like watching somebody weave, weave something, right? Like a, a particularly a complicated weaving. Um, so then I think that, that you see that, um, These factors are purifying through actually uh, the suspension of disbelief. <laughs> That's what's so fun, right? So you're purifying your understanding. And as that pur pur purification of understanding happens, the factors ripen more and more. Because there's the, the, one isn't getting so caught in the hindrances. They're, they're, they're able, the, the seven factors are able to ripen more and that just keeps ripening them. So, um, there is a, there's a very big difference between tranquility and equanimity, actually. Although equanimity, as it deepens and ripens, um, will usually feel almost suspended at times it's like they'll f there'll be a feeling of like almost like held held by it it can be so strong um and that being being held by it and feeling almost suspended is um very much connected to the tranquility mm. yeah does that make like so that that yeah. feeling yeah so that feeling of it um that feeling of being held by it is actually the tranquility that's coming from the non-reactive attention. So you see, with equanimity, there's, you know, the opposite of equanimity is reacting to the pain with, oh, with believing, right? You're reacting to the pain by believing the fear or the, you're believing the fear and the aversion and disliking. Mm -hmm. Versus if equanimity is there, you're, you can let the dislike and come and go by itself and not, not bite for it, right? You're not biting for it. That ability to, as the equanimity ripens, it's not just like that you're okay with, you know, a light kind of stream of pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. But then as the purification happens, the deeper things that we react to will start coming up. And if the equanimity is strong enough, sometimes one isn't also reacting to them, right? And so there's that, that brings more tranquility. Okay. I, I hope this is making sense for everybody. Yeah, so, so that then there'll be, like the times when it's, the equanimity is strong, of course, is what will determine the tranquility getting stronger. Thank you. Yeah, great. And I, I just want to add into this that sometimes we'll have this idea that the tranquility and the equanimity doesn't mean that there is a lot of... Um, difficult emotion happening, but that's not true. You can have a lot of difficult emotion happening or very strong, say, happiness or, you know, very intense um, 
positive emotions, po I don't, the word positive, negative, I don't like so much, but just um, pleasant emotions uh, that equi if there's equanimity, it doesn't necessarily mean that there isn't intensity of feeling. Yeah. So I hope that like that, the, that, that when I say being held by something, the tranquility and the equanimity will allow for that intensity without um, reacting to it. <laughs> right. And, and yeah. that's the shift that I'm noticing, right? It's like okay. it's, it, it rises, lives, and passes away, good or bad. And there is less reactivity uh -huh. when the tranquility is more present. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Because that's when you start feeling what freedom, the freedom is not in controlling what's appearing, right? The experience, we say it again and again, but it's, the, it's how we're relating to the experience that matters, not the experience. So it can be the most intense rage or grief mm -hmm. or, right, like, or compassion or like this intensity is happening without an owner without the controller. So we're not picking and choosing that this, this experience is more worthy of our attention than this experience. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, <laughs> great. <laughs> great, yeah. Hello, Tracy. Where'd you go? There you are. Okay. Hi. Oh, I can't hear you. Hmm. Oh, there's a there's a thing Jesse says. Go to the reaction page. <laughs> I think I brought it now. Okay, great. Yeah. <laughs> I'm feeling a bit stuck in my practice mm -hmm. and. So I was with you at Hollyhock and um, got to the point where I felt um, I had a, a very strong image come to me. Um, and it was about you have a, a feeling or something come up or you note it and then pleasant, unpleasant, neutral. And almost all of the things that come up were pleasant. And I started to realize that the theme with all of these things, it's like a great big long train of them that are really a buffer, um, I think, for my psyche or something. And it seemed like it was a sound panel, uh, you know, those things that absorb sound. And on one side, there was this great big vastness. And then on the other side, there was another great big vastness that sort of related to me somehow. And so I keep practicing this and it, it just seems stuck there. And um, a lot of these thoughts are just me talking to myself, um, a pleasant, remembering a pleasant thing or, or something like that. So it seems like it's just trying to buffer, um, I guess, unpleasant things. I, I think just to be careful of any interpretation at first like um, it could be that um, sometimes my sense of thinking often is that it's part of us keeping the other part company And so it, it doesn't necessarily have to be any kind of buffer except from um, no thought. <laughs> so it, it, like, it, the thing that's so interesting about the sense doors is that 
the hearing is happening all the time and seeing's happening all the time smelling it's why we emphasize being aware of the sense doors so much tasting is happening all the time even if we don't have something in our mouth right like if and so the body sensations this vast body sensations everywhere in the body like there's sensation whether it's numb or not there's sensation um and the same with the heart center, the chitta, there's um, thought happening all the time. Now, there can be space between thoughts, right? But that there's that, if, if we shift to that acceptance, that that's, that's the human predicament, um, or at least how incarnation works, um, then how I prefer to relate to thinking is that it's um, at the least keeping um, if you look at duality and subject object and how we develop from an infant to a being that is actually more cognitive and having thought about things um, I would say most of it is actually keeping a French, an attempt at friendship, and I, I don't ever, I don't think that we ever have learned to appreciate that that's a lot of what's happening, and that we don't relate to that that well. Like if if we if we did relate to thinking as um, like a kid that's trying to get an adult's attention and often lonely or even lonely or not not even lonely i mean any interpretation i think is a problem because it can just be simply friendship then then you don't have to necessarily make an interpretation that it's a buffer that's all that's why i went into all that because i think that buffer has a judgment that um in this from this perspective is is extra now I, I I do feel like um, the insight you're having around it is helpful because I think that um, that way that the thinking can be chatty does it feel chatty now this yes. is when I, I get to ask you questions right is it chatty right and then um, often again um, if there's this vastness <laughs> if there's this vastness appearing that's very different than the chatty then often the chatty is going to get assert itself because there isn't a familiarity or a comfort comfort with the vastness very true so yeah. that's where I I wanted to get there, but I wanted to like bring up this way we can relate to thinking because even with the the chatty, if you listen to it well, there won't be a judgment about it. It's it's like one part of us. It's trying to get our attention, and I I can give you an example of what how much I really understand this with. Um, I, I've had a lot of unusual jobs, and when I moved up to Northern Maine, um, any of the kind of training I had, um, there was nothing available for work. Um, uh, so I got a job teaching le learning disabilities, for example, in the public schools, but I wasn't trained trained in it. I often am pioneering, right? And so. When I went down to Insight Meditation Society to work for a year, I, I, they wouldn't give me that job back because it was too threatening for them at that time that I had gone away for a year. And I got a job, when I left that summer, I got a job teaching an archaeology dig. Now this is crazy. I got a job teaching an archaeology, uh, cooking for an archaeology dig north of Baxter State Park in northern Maine. Now I'm not sure you have an idea about how um, wildernessy that was, but it was there were only lumber roads out there that um, there were no rules 
there were no rules up there where how the lumber, the, the, the big trucks with lumber on them were. And I had a group of about 40 people, or Earthwatch, it was Earthwatch, um, people would volunteer to help this archaeologist um, dig, do a dig in this very remote area. But there was no, nothing. Like there was no stove, there was no building, there was no nothing. I can't believe I even accepted it, but I was desperate for a job. <laughs> and so, are you following me like with this? So the head of this dig was a professor at the University of Maine um, who had done amazing work on what we can all turn our t televisions on with public TV, right, and s learn all about shirt and like the timing of like, you know, when people came over the the Bering Strait or not, right? Like, and he he was finding pre-glacial um, shirt. He was, this was his big thing. He was, this was big, 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 big stuff. It, this is a, uh, probably seven, eight, no, wait a minute. Yeah, 79, 80, 19, around then. So it was um, cutting edge work um, that he was doing. And he had a son that would come up there with him, but he couldn't pay attention to him. So on top of everything else, I was the babysitter. <laughs> and I had a tent with no walls and no refrigerator and, and bad weather. And I could go into how crazy this job was, but I eventually found um, a lumber camp. This is what I usually will find eventually, some help, right? I found a lumber camp like five miles away with this guy, Andre, that kept saving my life because he actually had a building. He actually had a cooler. He actually, he actually had... <laughs> He could give me lemonade when I was like having a nervous breakdown. It was great. Like he he kept saving my life every day. But okay, so this kid, probably thousands and thousands of times a day, he would say to me, Michelle, and I really had to work on patience. He'd say, Michelle, I'm like, yeah, I'm trying to cook something here, and he'd be like, Do you want to know something? And it, it was, it was, it was like as permanent as anything gets in this world. It was like day after day. Do you want to know something like con almost constantly? <laughs> like, actually, I don't think I really do want to know anything right now, but it never mattered. He would still chat. And I just started listening to his thinking. Like, um, he was just trying to, um, have a friend. He was just trying to have somebody listen to him. Obviously, it wasn't me who was really the important one there, but I was the substitute, right? And it was really interesting. Like, the more I would accept it and accept that his thinking about, like, <laughs> wanting to tell me what he thought would make me listen, right? He was always trying to come up with things that would make me listen, was exactly my own thought process. I hope you're following the story because it's very, yeah. very important, right? Like that's what mostly we're doing. Yeah. I can see that. Right. Sure. And it's like when you start accepting that, because a lot of it is accepting that that's what a lot of thinking is for everybody, that um, it kind of cuts that interpretation that this is a buffer, right? Like, of course, we can go into the deeper stuff where... Clearly, what you presented was a fear of that vastness, right? Yeah, because it was a, a protection for me. Yeah, yeah. But I'm just wanting to bring this up as a level of like getting that almost all thinking is a buffer from that vastness. Yes, I could see that for sure. Yeah, and so the, 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 I, I relate to thinking more like meta, like it's a French, it's like a part of us trying to connect with another part of us that is like just trying to be a friend. And the level to which we don't, 
the level to which we have aversion to thought, particularly as you get quieter and quieter and go along and practice for years, there'll be these levels of aversion to thought that we don't even know are there. Mm -hmm. So that's also what's happening, right? You're seeing like this level of thought that you weren't aware of. Yeah. And it's it just repeating. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah. And my feeling again about this is that sometimes if we um, listen to the thinking well, it's like it will cooperate. It'll actually collaborate with us and it'll quiet down sometimes. But not with the intention, if the intention is to get rid of it, forget it. If the intention is to listen to it like as a friend, that part will, and you'll, like you, you, you have a relationship with that part. So you actually ask that part, well, can we like, can we be a little quieter right now, right? Rather than hitting the thoughts with a, like a hammer, like it'll be like listening for a while, and then it, usually it'll be quiet unless, it, unless our system is needing to tell us something. I just see it as my system is needing to tell me something. Mm -hmm. And then I, I have humor with it because I always just will say, well, do you want to know something? <laughs> Because I'll treat the thinking as like, do you want to know something? Actually, that's how much it repeats, right? Yeah. That's a great story because actually, like, it's like how many times is the system going to tell you, like, your elbow hurts or whatever is going on, right? And like, <laughs> that's minor, but you know what I'm saying. So isn't that fun? Of course it's saying, do you want to know something? We're not paying attention. Yeah. We are just not paying attention to our system. So it's like, you know, going to chat away. It does, yeah. yeah. And it, it's like, again, a lot of the equanimity is around this, frankly. A lot of the equanimity is like, do you want to know something? Actually, <laughs> no, but okay, I guess you're going to tell me anyway, right? Like, do you see that, that okay, 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 okay. Okay, and also learning how to pay attention to all the other sense doors so that it doesn't become um, like a bullhorn. That's a lot of the early years of practice, which I think of as many years, is learning how to pay attention to sound, body sensations, hands, breath, right? Everything else but the thinking so that you're getting some space and you're getting more space. Yeah. Yeah. Well, helpful. Mm. Okay, good. Well, see you next Sunday. I hope this uh, discussion goes in deep, trickles in deep, because it, it's meant to, um, every moment is the same, qu it, every moment we're doing this, every moment we're seeing mixed motivation and then pausing and taking time to come from a deeper place. That's what this is all about. And if you mess up, well, so what? Like, then you get another chance, and 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 then you get another chance. <laughs> hmm. Have a good week. Thanks again, Kay. Hmm. Thank you. It was wonderful. Hmm. Thank you. Mm-hmm.